Hi, so we're here today to talk about diabetes. Uh, diabetes can be defined as the body's inability to produce or respond to insulin, leading to an inability to use blood sugar appropriately. That's a simple definition. Uh, what I think we all know is that uh, diabetes is a little bit more complicated than that, hence why we're here. Um, it goes beyond the definition and uh, learned about uh, the management of it and how to apply this in our day to day. So today we're going to talk about a few myths and a few facts uh, regarding diabetes. Uh, diabetes goes away once my numbers are normal. That, in fact, is not true. Once we begin on a regimen, once we pay attention to those lifestyle factors um, that our providers are telling us uh, about, the idea is that your numbers will come, the hope uh, is that the numbers will come back in range um, where we'd like to see them. However, um, we've also seen that once that's achieved and for some reason we start to get comfortable, we pull back. Um, on that new regimen and uh, revert back to old habits, what we in fact find is those numbers creep back up. So diabetes is something that will continue to be here and something we have to continue to tend to over time. Uh, the second myth is that cutting out sugar, cutting out bread is gonna, it's going to cure diabetes. Unfortunately, at this time, there is no cure per se for diabetes. Um, we have treatments to help manage it, uh, but it doesn't go away. Uh, sugar and breads do fall under what we call carbohydrates. Um, these are types of foods that have a great impact on the blood sugar. So, um, you know, like that age old saying goes, everything in moderation is, is true. It applies here, um, but just cutting out sugar and bread is not going to cure diabetes, unfortunately. Last myth we'll hit on is that if I'm on insulin, then I must have type one diabetes. Not necessarily the case. It may be, but it may not be. Um, what we know is that insulin is one of our oldest uh, treatments for diabetes. It's very, it works very well. Um, we know that in a hospital setting, let me be clear, providers, I don't want for you to hear this and think it's okay to adjust your own regimen, but we know that um, providers can take insulin and um, adjust it up and down and um, make small increments, small changes all while on the same medication. Um, we know that other medicines, oral medicines, may offer two or three uh, doses. Um, you don't really have as much leeway. So insulin gives us that. Um, it's pretty well tolerated. Normally with medications, there are um, things to keep in mind, contraindications, but insulin is a really effective medication we can use really across the different types of diabetes. Depending on the type of diabetes, the treatment may be different, but what we see is that insulin can, in some instances, be used in um, all forms of diabetes, depending on um, the need for it at the time. that there are definitely multiple forms of diabetes. Um, it used to be that we knew of like type one diabetes and type two, where we know type one diabetes, um, the body or the pancreas um, more specifically makes no insulin or it doesn't make enough to really sustain us. Um, and then in type two, um, the organs just aren't working together to adequately um, use the sugar in the body appropriately. Um, there's other forms of diabetes as well. Um, we have gestational, which we see in pregnancy. It's a temporary form of diabetes. Um, there's also MODI and LADA. Bear with me. MODI stands for maturity onset diabetes of the young. Um, that one is caused by 
a mutation in our genes, um, which can happen over time. Um, we also have LADA, which is latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. Um, with that one, we see that over time, we tend to develop less and less insulin, um, oftentimes due to uh, some sort of um, infarct or uh, damage to the pancreas. Um, now, with these different forms, like we touched on earlier, um, the treatment and management of them is going to be different. So that's where some of this complexity comes in with um, diabetes management. Uh, but diabetes can be controlled. Um, it's diabetes should not mean uh, amputation. It should not mean premature death. Um, it should not mean ulcers and other complications that come with can come with it. Um, when managed well, we can avoid these um, or potentially hold this off for you know decades and decades. Um, but we have to manage it. Third and last fact. Uh, having a family history of diabetes increases your risk of developing it. Um, that is, in fact, true. Uh, there, are, there are exceptions, right? So it's not saying that um, if someone in your family, and we're talking about first-degree relatives. Um, so if you think about your household, mother, father, sister, brother, um, these are <clears throat> some examples of uh, first-degree relatives. Um, what we've seen is that if you do in fact have that history, it increases your risk. Doesn't mean you will develop it. Um, some people that have developed diabetes, um, for example, type two, um, some of them cannot trace that back to a first degree relative. But for the most part, we see a correlation there. And I'll leave you with this thought. Um, since we're talking about family history and risk factors, um, there is an, uh, a saying that refers to uh, like a, a loaded gun. Uh, basically, if we think about uh, genetics and the role it plays or family history in developing uh, diabetes, you could think about it as like an unloaded gun, which has a potential to uh, bring about danger. But it's not until uh, bullets are loaded in it. Uh, so where that now represents a, a real serious and present threat. Um, so it's not until we have that family history, uh, unfortunately, coupled with lifestyle factors that promote that disease that really um, brings about that threat. So very important uh, for all of us, uh, if we have diabetes, if we don't, to really look at um, lifestyle changes and um, what we're able to do to prevent it or manage it well. So thank you so much for uh, coming today. Can you tell us what your credentials are? I am a registered nurse with a certification in uh, diabetes education. So uh, it's uh, diabetes care and education specialist certification. If I am concerned about being at risk for diabetes, like let's say I go to my doctor's office and they do some blood work and they tell me that my numbers came back high, for something called like a hemoglobin A1 something or had like letters and numbers in it. But what does that mean for me? Uh, and do I, does that mean that I have diabetes? Does that mean that I will definitely have diabetes? Is there a way for me to prevent it? Great question. Um, what I'll say, yes, there's a way for you to prevent it. Um, there's a continuum, I guess, for lack of better words. Um, but we're able to see there's a part or a time where your A1C, hemoglobin A1C, what you're saying is normal. Um, there's a time at which it's elevated and then there's a time at which it's, um, after two occasions, uh, we can confirm that you have diabetes. So it really depends on where you fall. Um, if you fall in that elevated level, um, that's more of a, a yellow light. It's like an um, uh, indication that, hey, we have to change something before you progress into diabetes. Um, and it's at that point where you would really want to put um, uh, a lot of action into. Um, you can also put action into uh, uh, an A1C that reflects diabetes, but we'd like for you to do that before then to prevent the disease if we, if we can.